Uh, actually, a mate of mine that was with me, a bird took a shit in his head. So I said, geez, that could be good luck. And when we came back in, next thing was point, point, point. <laughs> so, this is great. <laughs> Hi there, you're very welcome along to the GR with me, Darren O'Sullivan. And I'm delighted to be joined by Donegal's M. McGee and a very happy Galway's Finian Hanley. Finian, 21 years, you thinking back to it? Jesus, yeah, I wasn't old enough to drink at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things have changed radically since, but uh, yeah, no, look, it's uh, it's uh, we're in dreamland in Galway at the minute. Uh, we didn't probably expect to be here at the start of the year, but here we are. Uh, I'll be answering no more questions for the day <laughs> uh, to any carry man, so uh, you can uh, you can try and break us down. No, I'm, I'm here to moderate. <laughs> if any of you start talking nonsense, playing down chances, I'm going to call you out on it here. Well, Eamon came in, he sat straight in the middle, he just said no, he'd get in between us early, but uh, no, it was a great weekend of action, I suppose. We'll start with the game that's probably freshest in the mind, Kerry and Dublin. Um, had everything, to be fair, and, like I was lucky enough to be there and I don't remember an atmosphere like it for a semi-final that I was ever at or even playing at. It was it was unbelievable to be fair, the noise, even for the parade. Yeah. I was actually recording it. I normally mm. wouldn't. But uh, just the noise, it was just erupting. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that, that's it. I planned to go down myself now, but just with the, the kids' situation, yeah. I kind of got caught up on it. And I regret now, as I was chatting to you before, you were explaining the atmosphere. And it came across that way on TV that there was a real buzz about it. And... You know, I was chatting today to someone else about it and saying you nearly get fed up with the whole Kerry Dublin, you know, rivalry. Mm. But it is special, like moments like yesterday don't come around too often, and that's when you really appreciate that there there is something about that the when you two meet. Yeah, no, it is something. It do, like I was actually thinking more as well. It does at times it gets a bit boring because you're trying to go over the same mm-hmm. things, and I actually got a, a, quite a lot of calls during the week from journalists about will you do a piece on this, and I said no because I was trying to keep all the good stories for us on the Monday (laughs) but it does get a bit but then when you get there and just the the colour and energy the dubs bring and then there's there's always great banter like but genuinely I it was hairs in the back of your neck standing um, on Sunday but uh, in terms of the game it's it's hard to know where to start we know where to finish Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we start there with Shawnee Shea's free Feeling yourself smiling like that, you're just. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great moment. I have to, yeah. Look, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. It, it, it was, it was unbelievable, really. And it's great we have that game, you know, every year or whatever it is. We had that big game. Pity it comes so late, but it was just, it was just remarkable. You know, it was, it was. Uh, people were a lot of people were saying Kerry were going to run away and Dublin had lost, but like credit to the Dubs, like they never ever threw in the towel, and that's great champions, like. They're obviously weaker this year than they have been over the last number of years, but they stood up to the plate and the likes of Kilkenny and Fenton and these boys were just unbelievable. Like to see how, you know, lads with seven, eight All-Ireland medals dragging a team through like that was just, it was inspiring to watch. And um, obviously the finish and the free, you know, would we see, you know, obviously Brian Jean had mm. kicked freeze like that over our heads a few times um, with, with plenty left in the tank, but uh, into the hill, into the wind, Last kick of the game, pressure on Kerry, like you could feel the pressure on Kerry, you know, obviously I, I wasn't at the game, but, you know, Kerry need this this year, they needed to get over the line and you could feel that when Dublin started coming back, Kerry were kind of getting tighter and tighter and tighter, but for a, a, a young man to step up and, and do that, it was it was absolutely remarkable. You, you feel privileged when yeah. you see that in, in real time to see leaders like that step up and, and even the way the dubs reacted, you know, I think... A lot of credit to the Dubs, but there was a wee element of, you know, Kerry were putting pressure on themselves and can we get over the final here? Can we get over Dublin and get into the final? Um, And, you know, that pressure built up and, you know, take that with some brilliant characters in the Dublin coming back. And, you know, that's what I felt. You probably see Comer on the Saturday, you see Sean O'Shea, you know, Fenton and Kilkenny and James McCarthy stand up and you just think... That's the players we should all be aspiring to. Them boys that just take the game by the scruff of the neck and say, listen, I, I'm not going to be losing here today. Yeah, no, it definitely was one of them games and I was watching it and like it was funny, up to 45 minutes, um, Brian Begley had kept Kieran Kilkenny so quiet mm-hmm. and a ball drops out to him and he punched it out of air. It was like, kind of give, you give a fella, like, here's a gimme now, get yourself into it. And he just exploded. And like you mentioned there, Brian Fenton, James McCarthy, Karma Costello has been around a long mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Like Costello's goal was unbelievable. Like that finish. And it all came from a bit of sloppiness from Kerry. We were, 
I had felt that the time we were starting to get a bit of lateral. Maybe there was a bit of fear of kicking the ball in. Maybe the wind was playing a bigger factor than it felt on TV and even in the stand. But uh, just the character, but it dubs. And like we we mentioned, the lads there, Fenton, Kilkenny, you know, James McCarthy, probably got on as one of the best ever. These boys haven't got all the medals for no reason. I, and when they need the fellas to stand up and fight, because mm-hmm. obviously it is a, a much changed Dublin team. Yeah. Like it was phenomenal. And from a Kerry point of view, that fear did creep in. Not only probably on the pitch, but in the stand, I was, I was definitely getting a bit. Were twitchy, you on the edge twitchy. of the seat? Oh, right? geez, I was twitchy. It, my wife was beside me. And she knew not to talk to me at that stage. My yeah. program was in tatters after because I'm sitting right <laughs> by the railing and I'm hopping it off it. But uh, yeah, there was a fear factor. We talked about it before about Jack O'Connor bringing a bit of extra steel, and he actually mentioned it that they have worked an awful lot on that side of the game. And look, I think in another year, maybe a couple of years ago, they would have lost that game. Yeah, and is, is there much, would you see a Paddy Talley influence there? Because I was thinking, you know, a lot of Kerry are better defensively, far better defensively than they would have been. And, like, is that Quirk's there too, Jack's there? And would Paddy Talley have a big influence there now? Because Paddy would have been a, took a lot of flack for the down, you know, campaign this last few years. and how. But when you see, you know, I've seen an interview Keenan Mooney did, I think the players are just in a bad place mentally and just they don't have the psychology. So maybe he took flack... That wasn't warranted, and he's still a good coach now. And would you see that? Yeah, I well definitely see it. And like what I found with Kerry yesterday, normally Kerry get their energy off the scores. Like mm-hmm. David, some of the scores David and Sean got in the first half. And we'll talk about it a bit later. But in the second half, especially, the amount of turnovers they they yeah. got, the amount of blocks, do you know, the amount of times where on another day they would or another year they would have conceded, the energy that was giving to the supporters and the team, and it was like at times it was very unlike Kerry mm-hmm. but we had to get like that eventually it was what was costing Kerry big games and like 100% credit has to go to Paddy Talley and obviously Jack is I'd imagine giving him free reign defensively and Jack I always said that he's he's raw and he's a rough diamond and he doesn't care how Kerry get over the line and I'd say he came in this year and like we mentioned that word steel that's what he wanted to bring because there's no point talking about good footballers because Good footballers and nice footballers don't win all Ireland. Mm. It, you need that bit of steel. I think Dublin have proved that over over this last year. Like Dublin, lovely football team, but you know they have that nastiness. And you know even when you see Evan Comerford sh- shaking the pole like just to try and that last kick, you know it's it's in them. And you know that's Ker- Kerry have gone on that journey. And you know the we we verbals we kind of nipping at players once they're uh, once they get a chance that. Unfortunately, that's. I think that's the way winners have got to be yeah. nasty now. Yeah, and like if you asked me over the last number of years, if you could take one of the Dublin players, I would have probably up to this year when Tyke Morley's going to say, I would probably said John Small. Do you know yeah, he was yeah. that fella? Like he can go up, he can kick the scores, but he can be as nasty as they come mm-hmm. in a good way. Like, and I was yeah. always we were lacking somebody like that. We're starting to add a bit more of that. But going back to the game, I suppose the first half, um, everything that Kerry were good at, Dublin just weren't at it. They were uncharacteristic wise it's just highlighted it's only after when you're looking at the wind how tough it was and the only problem for Kerry is at half time they probably should have been more up and you know with the penalty mm. I don't know what your opinions but did you think it was a penalty? Yeah yeah it was yeah 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 it would have been given I think out the pitch you know yeah. like when you're any way behind the man and you're getting a hat that We'll say the, the 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 hand that's further away across the body, you're leaving yourself open. You know, if he had near hand tackled or whatever it was, it, you know, if he, I I I think he would have went down anyway. Mm. But um, it, it probably marginally was yeah, it was a penalty. You know, uh, look, you can say it's soft or whatever, but it's black and white. It's either a penalty or it isn't. And uh, I think the ref the ref the ref got it right. Uh, it would have been a free out the pitch, but the penalty itself was poor, you know, for mm. Sean O'Shea to be taken. Like, you know, you could feel a bit of nerves in it as well. You know, there was a lot of pressure on it because it would have put them probably comfortably in the driving seat. Would they have pulled away if they got it? And that gave the dubs a lot of energy, that 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 save. Um, and obviously the antics that happened before that. Evan Comerford, mm. you know, he, he got a bit... Uh, I mean, yes, no, that, he got a bit light in the head or whatever ah, it was. But look, it's all this is all part of it. You know, the we're naive to say, Darren, that we go to training and we're not talking about 
smart fouls and go, it's What's all that? across. What's a smart phone? Well, it's all it's slowing <laughs> the game down. It's getting set up. It's all this is happening. Like do like do the public think that you go to train? You don't talk about yeah. this. This is all part of the game. The goalie warming up. That goalie was never coming no. on for God's sake. You know. But tell you me know, this: uh, when, when like, the penalty is uh, given, when the penalty you know is this, given, like, it's <laughs> uh, like but when the this, penalty is given and Comerford goes on. down, it's, it's, it's obviously we do great. Anything to win. It's great game management by Dublin, but you were the officials. Nobody's around him. He hits the deck, holds his head, and then the fizzers come on and rub his legs. They don't Sh- even actually know what injury to treat the fizzers. They, they know. <laughs> Surely be the God, the umpires can say to the ref, oh, geez, there's nothing wrong but here. But there's yeah. code. There's code. There's, there's, there's 100% code for all this sort of stuff. For Their there, hands there are tied. Their you know, physios, tied. physios know what's going on. It's like, right, you're going down, you get on. And, and, oh, and, sure and know that. the head injury I, I do it every second minute for the club at the moment because I'd be exhausted mm. and you come down you waste a couple of minutes whatever it's fine but my thing is with a black card you have a player off I t- what did he miss maybe a minute and a half yeah well that's a that's a different that's, conversation yeah. that, that's 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 a problem obviously like either well, they'll have to sort that they'll have to sort that but out, it's great you know? like I actually thought it was great like we said like we do you obviously talk about this stuff it's great game management by Dublin and he's a young goalie yeah do you know if that was uh, Clucks doing it you said geez, that's years of experience mm-hmm. like I couldn't get over how good a lot of the the newer Dublin players their game management is their maturity I know they have great leaders around them but it's like they pick this it's like they just soak it up like a sponge as if they've been there for a couple of years which is a massive credit mm-hmm. to them or it's like it's talked about an awful lot in the True. in the training uh, and it's emphasised an awful lot Um the reality is this: the, the rule is open to that, mm. and I yeah. think you're like, if Galway didn't do it, if Kerry didn't do it, they're going to be silly not to do it, to to take time off it. And the rule is open to, you know, having it abused like that there. And yeah. you know, you asked about the umpires, can they can they say right up? You get their hands are tied, the referee's hands tied. Like, does he? It's his word against. If I'm saying I'm injured, I'm saying I'm in a head injury. He's got to go. Mm. And again. Players and teams are always going to push it to the letter of the law, and I, I just feel it's the if they need to, they need to change the rule mm. if they don't want to see repeat scenes like that. Yeah, I think referees are getting a bit smarter to the you know going down with like anyone that's not like not a proper head injury would mm-hmm. say they're they're waving play on, which yeah. is great because. You know, there's nothing worse than the ref. You know, there's a counter attack about, about to start for the supporter, and you know the buzz is up, and next thing the ref is flagging it back to yeah. go back because someone needs a bit of the magic spray or whatever it is. Like it's, it's nonsense, like yeah. you know, and it, and it kills the game. And it, as Eamon says, it's all part of it. You know, let's get smart fouls up front, all this sort of stuff, the cynicism of the game. But sure, look, at the end of the day, Galway and Kerry are in the final. They don't care about yeah. any of this. This crap. Going back to Dublin, like obviously the first half, Kerry were very good. Um, moved better ball really well the big players stood up Dublin for me like was like watching the game the inside line the movement was just non-existent mm-hmm. lateral across the field taking shots that were a bit rushed and uncharacteristically white if Conor Callan's there obviously they're a different Dublin team and it'll be a case of if Con was there would Dublin have won we don't know maybe they'd be better maybe they'd be worse we don't know but it was amazing like we talked about it before how big an impact he has but being there live and actually being quite high you could see everything mm. back and forth up because they had nobody inside that was willing to be that ball winner mm. um, and they just looked so blunt in that first half it was just so unlike Dublin my wife like I said was beside me and she wouldn't be a big football interested and she goes if they weren't off for the last 10 years I say she'd know Dublin playing even if they didn't have their Dublin jerseys on and she said they were unrecognisable in that first mm. half. Like it was the best Conor football Callum statement plays. she ever gave. Conor it. Callum plays. I, I think Dublin actually go on and, and won, won that game because it changes the whole dynamic in terms of matchups, in terms of who's covering. I don't think you can go man to man. It's like Clifford. You gotta have that cover in front of you. You know, nearly double mark him, and it changes the whole. And how that game panned out, if Conor Callan's on the field, I feel Dublin won that game. And probably w- one of the notes I had, you know, uh, put down before this was asked Darren, does Dublin won the game with Con O'Callaghan? If he starts, like, do you see Kerry beating that? Do you th- do you think? 
Dublin won that game. Uh, yeah, I'd tipped Dublin if they had Conor Callan because just the out, the the, the you know mm. they they did do really well in possession in the second half. But as Eamon says, that ball into the four forward to stick to a guy that can move and can cause trouble. Mm. If Clifford wasn't playing, it's similar similar mm-hmm. ability wise. Do you know what I mean? So I think if Conor was playing, it's an absolutely different game because they would have kicked 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 into different, the full it's forward a line. Totally different game. Can know, Dublin play? They're they're not as ponderous they're not a well, slow well, ball Rock, way more direct Dean, for instance Dean Rock wasn't overly in the game but Con O'Callaghan gets him in the game because when the ball sticks Dean knows it's going to stick and he's off the loop and he's mm-hmm. two or three points from play then all of a sudden yeah. and that puts his marker under pressure so it, it, the magnitude of the loss was was absolutely huge you know and it, it, it was similar to if Clifford wasn't playing yeah, the thing is with Con if Con's missing obviously you're missing a great player but everyone else's level around him drops a small bit mm. 100%. I, I just felt that him not being there allowed Kerry to do that defensive plan that they want by getting a few bodies back, holding positions. You mind that D area where he wants to be winning ball and they're just going to be patient back. And of course, then you add in a couple of wides and you're, you're that bit mm. extra patient and you're maybe... There a couple of chances where they could have shot maybe wrong players in the right positions. They didn't take it. It was back and forth. And then they were open to the turnovers and Kerry have better, yeah. have better pace now this year and they were able to counter. But... It is one of the ones we won't know, and from a Kerry point of view, I'm sure we're delighted. I'm delighted, but um, yeah, look, I think like Dublin in the first half just to struggle for scores. I, like I said, it was so unlike Dublin. Even like to Costa, he got a great goal, but if if Khan's there, you're you're banking him for him for two or three anyway from play. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, as I says, it just people say Dublin are in transition. Dublin are in transition, but they're not going to transition to. You know, an average team. Mm. They're going to be playing to it. They'll be back. Con will be back. The lads will stay around. I don't think, you know, there's talk about retirements, but I don't see any of them as, you know, James McCarthy or any of the boys as wanting to retire. And them younger boys, you know, like Adele and all these boys, they'll have another year in the setup, another year to climatize to the to the standards within Dublin, to the standards that like Kilkenny, you know, Fenton and these have been setting. So, you know, they're obviously not going to be at the level they were. But they're still going to be. They're still going to be. You know, I predict semi finalists. They're going to be in the top four, and that's the reality of the whole Dublin thing. You know, how many years ago did the whole funding issue, and we created an absolute monster, which you know I, th- I feel that we had to create, and the capital, you know, has to be J has to be strong in the capital, mm-hmm. and that means that Dublin are forevermore going to be in the semi final, final, or top four anyway of uh, of the All Ireland series. Oh, yeah, they were never going to disappear. And like we've highlighted here in this show, we probably all got a bit of enjoyment out of them struggling in the league and it was a bit of crack and we had a bit of hot ball, but like that. We all expect them just to get promoted next year and they will be competing all the time. Mm. But I suppose going back to Kerry, um, the first half, it was so good to watch. I suppose Shawnee Shea started like house on fire. David Clifford kicked some just unbelievable scores left and right. Like I was sitting there and, you know, like I said, I'm like, can't keep my powder dry at all and get very excited watching especially my own team but I was trying to watch the two boys and just enjoy them and they are just incredible to be fair and I don't want to be just building them two up because there was a lot more of them around the place but you contrast the first half and then the worries kicks in because the mm-hmm. second half just wasn't there mm. Um, obviously Dublin got on top but I do think it came to maybe that bit of fear because Kerry should have been up by more at half time I felt and then there was a bit of fear and then the six point goes to five points a goal mm. but when Kerry needed someone we had a conversation last week on the show Paddy Clifford where is the best position we were on with Shawnee being sent to forward Paddy's coming too deep Kerry got that right Jesse for the most part Yeah. Mm-hmm. where Shawnee was a bit closer into goal like that he got 1-1 at the start he was winning ball he looked hungry he looked tiger Paddy was a bit deep out and he was linking the player really well but in the second half, when Kerry could not get that structure, couldn't get the ball into David, Shawnee was being well marked now at this stage, Paddy Clifford was probably the only one up there that was consistently winning winning ball, holding ball, poking holes. Yeah. But it is going to be a worry for Kerry going into the final against Galway. He's, a perfect, uh, he's the perfect player out there, you know, and as you said, those three in a triangle with Shawnee Shea at 13, we'll say, and Clifford. Like Sean Shea is, is very elusive, you know, you don't think it because he's out around the middle and he gets on kind of slower ball. But like his movement inside and his mm. pace, 
we probably underestimated it a small bit because he's got so much else and he wouldn't be as you wouldn't see him as elusive mm-hmm. as, as Clifford but in the first half there the runs he was making the balls he was winning like, All hard that's balls. a serious threat to say that you've got t- those two boys in, in, in the full forward line and, Cl- and Paddy Clifford's kick passing is just it's brilliant I'd say the boys love it you'd love to be playing inside I presume <laughs> and you'd hate to be a defender is Mark. it is and, 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 and he buzzes around there and gets on the ball um, no, he's a, he's a, he's a fantastic player. You know, like a couple of years back, it was kind of talk. He's been brought into the panel. All of a sudden, he's mm. heading for a second All Star and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And where, and, where and was he? Like what? What was? What the, age is he? He's <laughs> thirty two. Because <laughs> he's a serious, serious. I think the serious. thing with Paddy was he sees like obviously the younger brother was getting a lot of the hype, mm-hmm. and then he came in and he was probably going, "I'm every much bit as good as him, and I'm doing the business." For, and it was a case of to do what you need to. Cop on a small bit, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's a bit wild or whatever. But he is. He was just incredibly essay, and like that, you had Shawnee, you had David, and you had Paddy because Paul Ganey had a baby or his wife had a baby ten days ago, or so. He was off the boil a small bit yesterday. I wouldn't expect him to be like that the next day. But to have David Clifford and Paul Ganey inside and Shawnee just a small bit in front of him, you have three scores there, yeah. three good ball, and it allows Paddy to play that game mm-hmm. a bit further out. But then it is that balance that. Maybe Shawnee and Paddy can rotate a small bit, but it is about getting that balance, and making sure Kerry have the bodies further up the field. Mm. Um, so that'll be important against Galway. And, going you, and you have, I suppose, Paddy Clifford has skipped the queue really because you had Killian's plan, Tony Brosnan, and these great hopes. Tony that were didn't coming. see action yesterday. Didn't see action, and now Paddy Clifford is the man. And those boys have been left down the pecking order for for a reason. He's obviously performing and training as well. Mm. So you know, to ha- and me all Burns and these guys have been kind of pushed to the side a little bit. Now they're unbelievable players to bring on, but this guy must be absolutely excelling week in, week out to be keeping those guys who are, you know, seen as better scoring forwards and carry than, than Paddy Clifford. So uh, dangerous outfit, dangerous forward line. It's yeah, not a big call Jack Connor got. Um, Jack Barry starting. They're a mining drop to the bench. Jim Connor kind of pushing to wing forward. Um, Jack Barry taking his usual role and Finton did okay in him. Get yeah, I, th- I think Barry's been at that role for you know the last how many years? Number that, of years, yeah. And he's been fairly, fairly effective because as I say, Fenton is probably Fenton and Kilkenny, are probably the two main get get the ball and they're going to mm. create stuff. So you cancel, cancel without Con now, without Con being there, you cancel them out. You know you're you're on a good good, you know way going on to one now. But um, no, Connor got the call right, and you know that's. That's probably a big thing too in terms of Kerry had a wee bit more depth, mm. you know, than than Dublin. Dublin famously had the had the bench of spring. Uh, they don't have that anymore, and you know Kerry are, you know, they're they're probably, you know, eighteen, nineteen good players to bring on. Mm. Yeah, the other thing as well for Kerry as well. The last thing I want to highlight: the likes of Brian Begley, um, Jason Foley. Do you know a lot of these players would have been getting a lot of stick over the last number of years, Gavin White. Do you know it's the same mm-hmm. players Kerry have in defence. Yeah. But the work that is going on, like we were always saying the last couple of years, oh, it's just the defence. But they were outstanding yesterday. Brian Begley kept Kieran Kilkenny quite for forty-five. You're not going to keep him quite for seventy minutes. He kept, but even in the last ten minutes, and I hate the Kerry kick out. Gives me the heebie-jeebies every time it goes short. I hate it. But they kept winning ball. And they knew their roles in fairness and as much as a supporter makes you nervous, Brian Begley was constantly winning ball later mm-hmm. on. Even mm-hmm. when Kilkenny was starting to yeah, yeah. come into the game, the maturity, he's, he's around a number of years now as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was one driving out as well for before the for the build up to that last free as well. And even bringing on someone like Paul Murphy. Paul Murphy has eight or nine years of experience. He's having played a different role this year, but he came on easy option when he got that ball be maybe stroll up the line with it yes. or look for a hand pass yeah, yeah. he kicked it yeah, forward yeah. kicked it forward nice bounce pass into Clifford he won it they were saying a soft free maybe it was it, it was soft yeah it was soft if it wasn't that, that time of the game you'd probably say oh mm. I thought know. David Byrne did from your defenders from like cornerbacks I'm a forward so I don't you can see I was given but like he didn't he wasn't overly on no, the body his yeah, hand was no, on the I, ball I'd the be ball. given out I'd be given out you oh, always be given out, out. Yeah, of course yeah, he yeah, would yeah, Jesus yeah. Oh, the ref would be <laughs> yeah I think it was one of them ones that if it was different stage in the game you'd probably just think not yeah. of it obviously where it was and what the outcome was you'd probably go soft enough but it was a ballsy kick by Murphy you know we have to it was yeah that point and you know it shows that 
the easy you know I'm a cornerback coming out but of that's that. Jack yeah, as well yeah Jack is a kicking coach and I I always say it when I played under Jack I never ever doubted my kicking ever mm -hmm. because we used to kick from the moment you step foot on the grass to training to the moment you're walking it was kick kick yeah. kick honestly like you see with a lot of the boys even the likes of party David Moore and I was prime example every time David he gets loves kicked, the kick. David loves kicking but my thing is if you're kicking like even the goal Shawnee's goal after a couple of minutes he kicked it in I was going to Clifford mm -hmm. misread it but you kick it in anything can happen and if yeah. you lose it you're losing 120 or 30 yards in goal yeah. what's the what's the danger um, and that would always be my thing and it, it has happened a lot in the championship as it's gone on yeah. goals have come from kicking the ball in and then you get all these bloody stats men on about possessions, possessions and turnovers and shite <laughs> kick it in <laughs> Anything can happen. Yeah. I, I actually call this, uh, uh, I think it was a Saturday, like how many times that we've seen, they're, they're not even, they're aimless balls being kicked into the square and they're causing trouble. Mm. And you know, I think that's the lesson that teams, it's not the percentage ball. When you go back, like mm. people talk about possession, possession, we want to play the percentage ball. It's not a percentage ball, but, you know, it puts teams in bother. Like, you know, when, when Derry... We'll look back at that game, you know, you'll wonder why did they not just kick more ball in? And you've seen that you know, that goal for Shawnee O'Shea, ball was kicked in, bounced over the head, and, you know, there's a goal resulted mm -hmm. from it. So, you know, that's a learning that team will, teams will have to take going into yeah. next year. Just get the ball in there. And, you know, fullbacks have become nearly nervous under the mm -hmm. high ball because it's not it's not a it's not a big big no. ball going they're, in they're, anymore it's more football the full back line yeah. are playing yeah. now. they're all attacking because and, and and you're right Eamon if, if you kick the ball in you lose it you're, the teams are so well set up defensively now like you shouldn't be punished from that because most of your players are within your own half or around the halfway line let it in have a have a cut you know what I mean and it like, is a case of particularly like, in a 50-50 it's not a case of I get the raw middle of the field horse it in like if you look at where David actually kicked that ball in it's actually exactly, it's sideline going across. Mm -hmm. So if you over hit it, very rarely it's going to go over the inline. So someone can loop around the back like Shawnee. If it drops short, it's going into the top of the D where that's the scoring zone. So all it takes is one fumble. Um, but I do think, like, we, we're seeing it. Fortune favours the bravest team. 99% of the time, I think. And I think so. And another thing when we are talking about percentages, you know, we're going to have to get away from the scoring zone concept. Mm. You know, everybody, my scoring zone is going to be different. Well, maybe not so going by the skills <laughs> challenge, <Senior> but <laughs> <laughs> my scoring zone is going to be different for your sc yeah. for your scoring zone. Yeah, the, same, yeah, yeah. the same with you. And yeah. we kind of, the percentage shot for, you know, your forward all your life is going to be higher you, for you in different areas. For me, it's going to be close to the goal. Like, and again, it's just nearly getting away from that risk averse mm. way of approaching games. And, he said, Jack O'Connor's a kicking coach and, you know, that's that's what we need to move towards. It's a great advertisement as well for, you know, moving the ball fast because... And there was there was moments now, because I know it would be highlighted, there was a period there, I think Kerry had the ball for three minutes. I think Paddy ended up getting the score, punched it over the bar, which I know people don't like as well. But it was three minutes and it was, it was awful to watch, to be fair. But I do think there are times in games where you have to be patient. Now, three minutes is a long time mm. to be patient. Um... So there are times where you have to be that bit cuter, but I think once you're trying to go one way, yeah, people yeah. appreciate it. Because, look, it was a great game to watch and it was unbelievable scores in and great moments of movement and kicking. But there also was, on both times, both teams went back and forth, over and back, where that fear, which is natural, mm. People the, the, like a lot of players don't want to lose the, the problem. You have is is when the build up is slow in just say a carry of the ball in their defense, and they you know someone's labor coming out with a solo and it takes time, and then the team are getting yeah. set up. That's the problem. That first kick is great because it takes that yeah. defensive structure out of mm -hmm. it. And Kerry are really, really good at that. Like you look at Man City playing Liverpool, they don't dwell on the ball and they're not allowed to dwell on the ball. It's move, move, move. And yesterday, some of the scores Clifford got were just two kick passes over the bar. The, the Costello goal was. Yeah. Turn over three hand passes like there was no thinking. They were just get it up there as quick as we can. And they're a prime example of people around about the hand passes. This when the hand pass is done with bodies moving and it's slick hands. Yeah, yeah. it's as good as anything. It's Kenny as good. can take a hand pass, take five players out with a thirty yeah. hand hard hand pass. Like He's so good at that it. That Dublin too. goal was everything they've been good at for the last ten years. Do you know? It was brilliant. The, yeah. the, the thing about it is that, and Derry will have to learn from the two teams that. Two teams that played yesterday, Kerry and Galway, that 
in order to be a top team, you've got to do it both ways. You've be able to be patient and you've got to be able to kick it. That's the way the game's gone. Yeah. It's not where, you know, when we were successful in the first part of la the last decade, where, you know, we the defences, we counterattacked all the time. You know, yeah. you've got to add that second string, it, string yeah. to the bow. Eh? And, you know, if Derry stay in their one way of thinking, they're probably won't even get a Division 2 next year. Yeah. Um, Before we go on to that game, because we're going to go after Kerry Dublin game now, one player I want to mention is James McCarthy. He kicked an incredible score as well in the second half. I, for one, hope that's not the last we see him. I know he's had injury troubles this year, but mm -hmm. like, what a Rolls Royce. Like, There's no way he'll retire. There's no, I don't think so. Like, he's, he's just he's so committed to the cause. and like, like Even his reaction to the score, like the camera zoomed in, like, he was one of the, the focal points to get them going, but like it was just an the incredible The kick out score. he broke after the Straight score. Straight after, yeah. yeah. You know, and they got a score out of that. It was just like it was. It, it wasn't the hardest thing in the world to do to break a kick out, but he got a clean hand on it, and his demeanor after that yeah, was, was just business. Get up, lads! Yeah. Get up off your holes here. We're we're going at this yeah. big time, you know. And 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 that fed Kilkenny in Fel Costello, and then then they then they started moving. But like, Jesus Christ, the guy is like. <laughs> It's, it's the player that I hope I, he gets the nine dollar Ireland. Like you I know, hope it doesn't. Fairness, to be fair. he, 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 it's he the deserves. player that I loved. If I was to pick, you know, we all have our players I would love to take from. James McCarthy was at the top of the list all day. As just someone that he he had the steel. He was like there's badness in him too, but he he's just so fit, strong, and he's a great footballer. And I like Finney, and I don't think he'll retire. But w when he does, we've got to just make sure we keep his genes on somewhere that we can just replicate yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah, footballer yeah, he's a, he's all serious, the time yeah. eh? no he was yeah. unbelievable but um, I suppose before we go off it, like, in fairness to Jack there was a bit of pressure coming down to Kerry the way he left Kildare um, but this is why he was brought back by Kerry and I like I would have been a big supporter Jack obviously I had him twice and the one thing I thought he would bring back to Kerry was that bit of doggedness that bit of stubbornness he mentioned in the interview after that they've been working a lot on the the mental side of the game mm -hmm. and I do think if this was over the last number of years they would have lost that game because momentum was fully with Dublin Kerry did go back in front by a point with a Shawnee Shea free Dublin pulled back to a front the Dublin equaliser I don't know if you noticed it it was a, a brilliant ball in by Fenton Paddy Small won a great mark but got a push and as he's hitting the deck he's there to the ref push I'd say it was a case of if I leave Dean Rocket, this will take the free yeah, instead yeah, of the yeah, mark. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Game smart. Yeah. yeah. Again. And he had a big impact as well when he came on. But I, I had to laugh when I saw it. I, it was a case of, we're in the 74th minute. This is around 35, just to the wrong side of the goal. Yeah. Ref, that wasn't a mark. It was, it was a push. Up, yeah. It was brought up, it was brought up yeah, in, yeah. I'd say, for a moting or something. Yeah. But uh, I had to have a laugh at it. But uh, yeah, from a Kerry point of view, look, genuinely as a supporter, like and it was one of my most enjoyable, like I can't, like, 2019 as his first year out it was a bit funny your first year away from it it's a bit, bit strange mm -hmm. but yesterday was probably the first time there as a supporter where I definitely got over animated so looking forward to the final and definitely won't be watching it as a neutral but Finian now it's your time to shine <laughs> none okay, of this no comment. none of this this could take a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> myself and Ian will come back in 20 minutes yeah. but uh, yeah look there was uh, but one of the games going into we couldn't call like I genuinely like just chatting to f people down the bar over the last number of days they're like oh what about the first game I was like, Jeez, like, I'm, I was looking forward to watching it was one of the ones intriguing is the word I'm going to use I'm not going to use the negatives as much as I can mm -hmm. but I, I kind of felt that it was going to go that way at the start yeah. um, you you often use the wor word mirroring you use it as well when, in terms of Donegal and it's not that we all feel the same that both teams would be just we use the phrase well afraid of losing I don't know how well I, you describe it. I don't know if Fred will lose. And I, I don't think I'd agree with that term in terms of... It's just how they, they, they set up. Mm. And again, it comes back to, you know, possession, possession, possession. Like Derry had four men, just a good example. You know, it's been well documented that they throw men in the full forward line to try and stretch it. And they, they, didn't, they didn't use them because they didn't want to give away the ball. Like, and... It's just it comes back to that possession. They have the one way of attacking. Mm. It seemed like even though Derry probably averaged, I think it was 21 points up to that game, including extra time with uh, Donegal. And I felt going into it that they just were lacking a wee bit in the, in the attacking part of their game. You know, that they have to go on that journey. And the worst thing for them to do is just radically rechange the thing. And, you know, listen to... 
people say that you need to go a different direction. They're on the right direction. They've got to get to where Dublin and, you know, Kerry are at now and have the both both sides to their game here. Mm. Um, and Galway, I'd actually back Derry for the semi-final, but it was like a toss of a coin. Galway on yesterday's show and once they got a wee bit, you know, they were a bit lost there in the first 20 minutes. But once they got going, they showed that they're a wee bit further down the road than, yeah. than Derry. Definitely not at, unfortunately, funny, and they're definitely not at uh, Kerry's level, but they're they're going down the road and they they have the plenty more scope for it. Yeah, Finian, from a, from a Galway point of view, you're watching the first twenty minutes, there you're dominating, but it's only three nil. Like yeah. what? Like are you sitting there getting frustrated, or you kind of quietly happy enough that Derry are dominating but it's only three points will eventually kick into gear here will eventually poke a couple of or are you getting worried that this is going to be a case of we're going to lose this 5-4 5-3 or something No I think it was the consensus in the stand certainly and uh, I had my two daughters with me first day out so they were tired and emotional and trying to figure out what was going on I'd and say stuff you were like tired that. and emotional too <laughs> <laughs> it was a long day so the first 20 minutes didn't help me uh, get the you know the parade was the buzz the buzz and then the game started and it was like yeah, it did. Do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it just stopped. So we, we were kind of saying there was a dairy guy next to me who said, Jesus, we should be way more ahead here or whatever it is. You know, we should be four or five, maybe a goal or whatever. And I think the clear game for Derry kind of fed into that because they were kind of thinking, let's hammer Galway early doors here and see what they have. You know, let's get everyone behind the ball. That was obviously the tactic. But when we were only three down and then we got a point, then it was three, two, all of a sudden, and we were kind of looking at it going, how are we only a point down here or whatever it is? This is this is good because we're not playing well at all. You know, we've 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 mirrored Derry, we're well behind, but up front we looked we'd nothing. We'd, you know, Kenny McDade had missed one, Dylan McHugh took one from out on the sideline. Yeah. We were panicking and we used the word last week, patience, patience. I said, shit, we we're not gonna have the patience here to do this if we're going snapping like that. Mm-hmm. But then it takes the wilder beast to get the ball and <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, he just yeah. saw the gap and that kind of ignited us. Once he saw that gap and got it over with the left, it was kind of right. Let's get tighter to this guy now because this guy can really destroy us today. It turned out to be, but um, that kind of lit the, lit, the, lit the flame for Galway because we were just going back and maybe our boys kind of said, well, look, you know, they've a lot of bodies behind the ball, but are they, are they that, you know, are they that mm. good at this? Can we, can we get at them? And, 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 and we did eventually after 20, 25 minutes, we, we started opening up a bit. So like it was nervy start and I was thinking, Jesus, or, you know. I, I would have said Joyce would have been, and Keen O'Neill would have been just tearing their hair out in the first 20 minutes yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Because obviously they would have prepared for Derry. They knew what Derry was going, everybody knew what Derry was going to bring. And for them to be making all them mm. bad decisions and, you know, snapshots, Joyce would be saying, like for him to get a set, I didn't see any way. Mm. Once Derry got that start, I said, oh, they're actually going, like what are Galway doing here? They're Derry will cruise. But in fairness, like talked about leadership, Comer showed the leadership mm. and he just stood up. And again, such a privilege to, to watch that and, you know, to see to see that and see that in action. And it was, you know, don't think they're going to beat Kerry now, but you know they'll they'll, they'll make them think. Mm. Well, even watching Comer, it is actually unbelievable to watch that. It is a case of give me the ball, I'll make something <laughs> happen. And when you are playing against a defensive, we were we're always talking about kicking. Kick. Sometimes there isn't holes to kick it into. Do you know? Sometimes you can't when you're on the ground. You can't actually see the space to kick, and it is up to fellas to look at their man eye to eye yeah. and just take him on. Or it's a forward hand pass where then you add that bit of pace, and that's what Comer did. He added that bit of a explosion to it, Do you know, where he had it, he has that robust structure. Like if he gets up ahead of steam, he knows he has all the skills in the world, but he also knows that if I have to go into contact here, yeah. I'm big enough and strong yeah. enough to be able to go yeah. he, through he, fellas. He, I suppose give him a compliment and criticism <laughs> at the same time here, but like Damien over the last number of years, and you know, he's the word maturity and immaturity come to mind like when he first started playing for Galway and a couple of years after that it was very get the ball Damien will bully out of the way because yeah. it was like an under 10 kind of a player where it was just like I'm the man and I, I'll kill everyone and I'll score <laughs> You know, and he's had to mature. You know, on the pitch and off the pitch, his 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 father passed away at a really really young age, so I'm sure at home he's become kind of the general, and he's he's you know he's helped. He comes from a fantastic family. They're they're great people. 
great Galway people from Anadown and he's he's he loves Galway and he loves it but sometimes he gets too much on him why isn't it happening for me mm. all the time then the injuries came and he mm. broke his foot and you know he was getting a bit disillusioned Damien you know with the whole thing and obviously this year injuries you know went away he got really really fit he looks way fitter than he has done over the last number of years and he's he's more mature his performance on Sunday you know, not just typical, let's pull lads out of the yeah. way and use my body. And, you know, a little bit of, you know, mess acting and stuff on the pitch as well it was in his locker. So he's changed all that. He's really mature and he's turned into an absolute leader. And that that performance on, on, on Saturday was so mature from him, you know, all around. Everything he did was, you know, the new Damien Comer. We know he has ability. We mm. know he's got unbelievable strength and power. But up here... He got that right and, and it all came together for him. And I was just, you know, hearing him speak after, I was just delighted for him. He, like, mm. he deserves that mm. performance. Just this, this hearing that makes me just love him all that yeah. more, like, because when you hear the journey he's been on there and, you know, you say he's robust, like, it's just the, he's just a monster. Like, he, <laughs> did he did he work in a pub in Galway f- a few years he ago? Like, he worked in Taffs, yeah. I would imagine like if, if there was any hassle, this comer would just give the look and everything would just... Quite down. down eh? Yeah, he'd be he'd be able to fire a few lads yeah. out. But I used to mark him in training, like every you know, particularly in the latter years. You know, when you'd be on the B team and you'd be marking Comer, nightmare, like you mm-hmm. know, just leave me alone. He'd just move. He'd he'd you know, it's particularly in a AVB before a championship match where everyone would be really up Wired for it. Up. Like you know, you might get him on an off day, but like he just the power is just power is frightening. Like he was doing these jump tests back when he started and I remember the strength and conditioning coach going like this lad's jump is like it's, he's in a different realm he's in NFL territory yeah. like his natural strength is Just phenomenal and yeah. the way Shane Walsh has been kept quiet relatively quiet now his, his free some brilliant freeze there yesterday the way from play that he's been kept quiet and you know the pressure was on Comer to deliver yeah. and he he del- delivered yesterday so Probably when Shane Walsh gets, when he thinks back now, let's say he needs the big final here. He, If Galway would have any chance, Shane Walsh needs to be, you know, making stuff happen from play. Yeah, well, we won't talk about the matchups with Galway Kerry yet, but like from a Kerry point of view, just looking at them, I don't think they have anyone to physically mark him, to be honest. But we'll talk about that another time. A big talking point the last year was Hawkeye. It's mm. amazing. We're getting to all our semi finals around about Hawkeye. Um, why it was needed at the time, I, I was a bit surprised. Well, it, it looked <laughs> fairly obvious, um, and then somehow technology is supposed to be the the future. It's very strange. Like, it was, what, what what was the story with the umpire? Did anyone find out after that? Like it was pretty much straightforward. Like uh, no more than your own wife. Like like yeah. <laughs> my wife could even see it was over the bar. She hasn't a clue what's going on. Um, it was it was yeah. It's it's strange. Or how do they look at the when the ball goes over the bar some of them run around to the front to see but that's it wasn't even I, I get their mentality because they're going to trust to say right I'm not 100%. 100% here I get why they go but like it was an obvious point if it came push comes to shove I'd imagine they'd put up the flag but I get they just want a wee bit of affirmation mm-hmm. here it's a natural point we'll go to Hawkeye Hawkeye's not but they've learned and we've learned an important as technology and like we're on but AI and you know driverless cars technology's yeah. going to let us down well, far, we are not on about that at all <laughs> oh this me the te- technology is going to let us down we can't rely on this too much no bog, no 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 <laughs> we need this has to be a lesson going forward yeah. for society that you know we can't rely on technology yeah. too much as far Joy said you know technology is only human <laughs> but but at the same time you know how how many why are we only saying that? How many points over the years has Hawkeye got wrong? Well, Conor Glass had one in the second mm-hmm. half that, we don't know. Uh, looked to score. Yeah. Looked to score where I was and he yeah. looked, you know. And, and, and they used to revert to the linesman the odd time for yeah. a point, didn't they? That was contentious. So you've got two umpires, a linesman. <coughs> and a computer. Fourth official, a computer. You've got a lot going on there. So, you know. And, and the actual flow of the game, you know. It's, it, it was a big thing. It was it because the momentum changed. I felt, mm. you know, and I, w- I think it was a big, big call. I think it was a big call. But how many points have we seen? You know, good points that that haven't been given down to umpires. So, so I'm not too worried about the the whole Hawkeye thing. You know, we'll get Hawkeye sorted now. But there's been points around the grounds where there's no Hawkeye that haven't mm. been given, yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. you know, we yeah. we have to take that into consideration too now. Yeah. And when it was corrected, did that give Galway probably a bit of lifting? One mm-hmm. three in a row straight after half time. 
Well, we're four all, and in yeah. a game against a, a, a very defensive team, that's a fine margin to go from four three down psychologically in the dress room to go from 4-3 down to 4 all to level pegging again mm. and Derry had defended as robustly as they could they had all the bodies inside the 45 and it was a case of you know if they got a point in the second half 5-3 it's a huge difference to go in yeah. one down and then come out level do you know what I mean I just thought psychologically for Galway uh, actually a mate of mine that was with me a bird took a shit in his head so I said geez that could be good luck and when we came back in next thing it was point 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 <laughs> said, this is great <laughs> right uh, it's only good luck when it's not you we forgot to do the lotto but um, but no I think I think that psychologically I don't know what you think Eamon but like to win 4-3 in a game like that and come out for all I'd say psychologically um, massive in terms of the flow of the game and the fact that you know that Galway had actually got another score right away after after the disputed point it was you know it was it was a big big thing and you know Derry were probably lost a bit of momentum and it just Galway got one in their sails and they just went at them and I think for me looking at that semi semi final I would have felt I was sick as a Donegal man because I thought we gave Derry far too much respect in the Ulster final and I think you know you've you've got to go at them you've got to ask questions and it, we, we didn't do that Galway although they struggled they, they did ask the questions and the likes of Comer and, and, the, and these lads went out and just kind of Put it, put it up to Derry and, and you know Derry will have to learn from that I think from a homework point of view uh, sorry Darren just no. on, 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 on Derry playing that defensive game they did uh, we spoke about it last week Sean Kelly was a big big addition out the pitch like mm. Sean Kelly's not a natural fullback and actually our, our, our three fullbacks aren't they're more ball players and Sean Kelly will kill you with runs going forward mm -hmm. and when they retract when they went retreated back into that Sean was able to go up to midfield his most comfortable position and start punching holes yeah. and he's devastating going forward you know he's absolutely like any team if you want Sean Kelly you want to pin him back into the full full forward line or full back line and ask him questions in there which I think Kerry will try and do but he's like going to be with Clifford <laughs> well exactly I don't think he'd be on Clifford when we get to, to yeah. that but I think if he's any way out around the D and he showed in the second half a couple of the runs he made his control is so good we saw in the Sigerson like scoring goals going forward and and when Sean Mulcairn comes back in the next year, well, hopefully next year, Sean Kelly will probably be out at seven where he's going to be, he's going to go to a new realm altogether going forward. He's in that Gavin White, Carl O'Connell, yeah. you know, Brendan Jack Rogers. Mc yeah, Brendan Rogers. He's like that, Just you know. So uh, I thought that was a big mistake by, by Derry. I think they should have left one up maybe just to paint yeah. him back a bit, you know. Yeah, and like I suppose like going into the game, I, my one thing with Derry was if they don't get goals early, you don't get that momentum the game is always a bit more stretched in the second half. There's more holes. We've talked about the Galway forwards before. They're all, they're free scoring all over the six forwards that they might have a bit more. And they got 2 4 from turnovers, Galway. And I, Derry went from the 12th to the 62nd minute without scoring from play. Like, you're, you're going, no, look, they've made a meteoric rise to get to this mm -hmm. stage. Yeah. And obviously, there was hype and momentum and build up. But the, just not there yet. And like you said, they don't have to go away from what they're yeah. They need to just tweak it and take it up a little. I, I just think the fact that Shane McGuigan, who's probably one of the best forwards in Ulster and definitely in the top 10 in, in the country, spends an awful lot of the time in, in his own half. And granted, sometimes you've got to do that. Sometimes you've just got to scramble, get set up and you know make them hard. But you know you want your quality up there, the, the, way, the way Clifford's up there. Mm. You know, you want them fresh and being able to create, yeah. create, create up on the other end of the field. And you want his you know, energy you, in the in the in the, yeah, the exactly. opposition half. Yeah. Like and Derry are going to have to add someone to with mm. with McGuigan when they and they've got to add a wee bit more kicking, and just got to basically basically evolve the the same the same way we've we've all the journey we've all went through. Yeah, and Finian, your miners had a, an All Ireland title. Unbelievable win, yeah. For a man who tries to play things down. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you've won a minor. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a great you've year. You've had a great somewhere. year. Well, look, our hurlers as well. Yeah, brilliantly. Um, it's uh, it's party time in in the west at the minute. Like we're, look, it's it's been unbelievable. It's not built on you know years of whatever. It's just. We've got really, really good management teams in place. Um, the miners lost to Leitrim and Mayo twice this year, 
and went on and won the All Ireland. You know, if you think like that's you know to lose three games uh, convincingly and then go on and win, sometimes mm-hmm. you just need something can mm-hmm. can can spark it. And you know that was an exhibition on 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 Friday night. And I suppose our biggest challenge over the years has been you know we go on and win a minor or we win an under twenty one and then that, that's it. Your look, it'll come in time and the players have to figure it out. We need to start channeling because our underage structures aren't the best. Our coaching isn't the best in Galway. We don't have those facilities. Our facilities are are, are, are pretty shocking as well with regards to training pitches. So there's loads of work to do. So I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, we've got a, a monumental next few years coming. We've a lot to do to channel what we're doing at senior, what we've done at minor, but it was a great start. Like Friday night was just, was, was, was epic. The boys did brilliant. You know, the corner back there, the, he Thomas Farding, he's the type of guy now that we need to get mm-hmm. in. Really good man marking corner back. Uh, Ian Monaghan up front. But like. that's the problem with the structure. Like he's seventeen, he's only a child. Like he's a long, long. hundred percent. He might be playing in two or three years' time. And you in know, Galway, yeah. the way it is, that's what happens. So we need to channel these boys and try get them into under twenty and get them ready for senior. Because realistically, what happens in Galway is an under twenty manager comes in, he'll care about himself. He won't be looking about getting them. 21, 22 ready for Porrick or whoever the senior manager is he'll just like we have to win an under 21 mm. that's that's what we have to do and whatever about developing them I don't care so we need to we need to get that in place um, no it was a big win it was a big win it got us started on, on Friday and it, sh- it shouldn't be a case like people underestimate that minor one it might only be in terms of how it affects the senior mm. like it might only be a percent maybe two percent that you get away the seniors say that's a brilliant and they get a wee lift but it's still a lift from somewhere mm. and you know, I remember we played Dublin in, tw- in the semi final 2014 in the minors, who were underdogs as well. And you know, the doctor was doing the line for the minors, and he came in and he says, Yes, the minors have won. I gave you a wee lift, yeah. and the same thing again. Once once Galway had won that, they would have definitely got got, got a wee lift fr- from that. So, she definitely shouldn't be, uh, you know, disrespected. And in terms of the Galway thing, it's interesting because you know, from chatting yourself and chatting other men, like there's an not a lot in terms of there's still a lot of work to be done at the structures Absolutely, and yeah. the fact that they're doing so well in the hurling you know they won the minors and they're in a senior final like it just just shows you it doesn't have to be that most county boards tend to wait for cycles they'll just a good team will come along they'll get the final and it doesn't have to be that way like yeah. Galway by right should be you know again in that top four bracket all the time if yeah, they get the structures in place time. and what happens in two weeks time you know if we go down Fighting against Kerry, or if we win, or whatever it is, yeah, it's it's, it, <laughs> it's 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 building it's building yeah. for the future, and it's sustainable that we can compete every year. Like we don't want to come out next year and have a crap year and go away for five or six years because that's what happens in Galway because we just we're traditional and we, they'll come along. Michael Donnan will be around the corner or Jaff Allen. Mm. It doesn't happen, and uh, there's a huge huge bit of work, and we need to use this run this year to really promote the game in Galway, particularly in the city. Like we've no schools. <laughs> doing well you know the mer- the, the merging of coaching between the schools it's just not there I'm just going to stop you there because you're trying to make everything negative at the moment it's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal it's brutal but just before we go on from the game another goalkeeper mishap out the field you'd love to see it Oren Lynch this time are we going to see the end of this keepers, ah look I'm sick of him <laughs> Shane Ryan took off at one stage I was roaring at him he was, was kind it? of jogging back was he or uh, or he, he people like watched he, that uh, clip I, no, may, yeah, maybe he was sprinting but it looked no, like he was jogging he looked was like he, there was a saunter <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the way he jogs back then you'll realise he has no business being out the field no, at all like, yeah. and I, looked, I swear I was watching that as, again this morning and I was like He's not in much of a rush, is he? I, I was looking for the player on the goal line because I was sure this guy thinks that there's a, yeah. a play, like he's covered there. Covered. He was, <laughs> no. But but again, taking a box because you know Ethan Rafferty, Ethan Rafferty's dynamic outfield player, Niall Morgan. Can I just say Ethan Rafferty played outfield county? Yeah. Yeah. There's a big difference. No, and I'm not saying I like him doing it either, but he's probably he is going to be better than anyone. Niall Morgan plays outside of his club. Begging and he's good. times like he he's not going to be as dynamic or explosive as as the lads we mentioned, but he my can still play. Is, I still play outfield in my club, and I couldn't play outfield for Kerry now. Like there's a reason you're in goal for the county. It's normally because you're not good enough to be out the field. So look, I think some keepers can do it. That's what I would some say. Some keepers can do it, but not every like oh, now Shane Ryan plays outfield for his club, and he took off yesterday, and I was ro- I said, get back, get yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, he's about six foot six. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 
Um, but they're, 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 I have to give a shout to our own goalie, Connor. You know, was under serious a pressure. pressure. The talk in Galway all week was where we changed the goalies, this, that, and the other. I thought he had a great game. Mm. You know, his his long kickouts were good. You know, he was composed on the ball. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. And uh, you know, it was kind of that was the talk all week yeah. where we changing the goalies or whatever it is. But he like, did really, really. I, well. I would have been saying that too. We've got to go out that keeper. Yeah. You know. Gleason would have been fragile. Mm. Like we Derry should have went at him and tested him out a wee bit more now. It was just a pity he actually conceded so late, like kinda of took the glass if he got a clean sheet. Mm. But look, all in all, we've uh Kerry and Galway in a final. And, and just on the corner backs, uh, I was sitting in the twenty one, we'll say Derry defending and you'll appreciate Chrissy McCaig and McCluskey were they're good players. They're serious, yeah. serious cornerbacks. McCluskey, Shane Walsh tried to take him at one stage. 99% of the country he'd, he'd yeah. got him but how close McCluskey got him to turn him back out was really a signal it was early in the game it was on the Cusick stand side Hill 16 and you just see the way he gets tied and pushes him back out Shane would have burnt most players mm-hmm. you know what I mean like he's a ser- like he's probably been the all-star cornerback and Chrissy McCabe the two yeah. of them have been you know from our point of view them two boys have been absolutely outstanding this year like you know so they're and a it huge bodes well for Derry in terms of that they ah, can like, go to that more expansive big time that it is it's a, it's been a, like obviously there'll be a sour taste now and disappointment but when they look back on it the journey they've had and the position they're in now to yeah. kick on it's brilliant for them and look more power to them but Kerry and Galway in a couple of weeks but we also had the Teletine Cup final Westmead the first ever Teletine Cup winners and we were talking about it earlier the scenes in Westmead and Mullingar were incredible um, might be another place to go this week Finian, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it was great um, it was a brilliant win two of the best teams in it as we said um, I suppose we all thought Cavan going into it obviously the performance they put up against Donegal um, but Westmead worthy winners on the day were, were they winners you know I thought they, they were up until Galligans you know they, they'd played well then the flow went against them mm. in terms of, you know, Calvin got the goal and it looked like they were gonna they were gonna see it out and then Galligan got the got the red card. But probably overall Westmead were were worthy winners. I'm I'm actually delighted Jack Cooney would have done a wee bit with uh, with Donny Gall in twenty fifteen or sixteen. Mm. And he's a good guy, solid guy. Um so I'm I'm delighted for him and I'm delighted to see the the scenes you know that the fans have bought into it and that's a big thing if you know you can create a buzz from one in a couple out there and the fans like just throng the streets singing the song and you know some kid that'll be at that there will say I want to do this and that's that's how you inspire the next generation and how you create a you know a good vibe about the cup so again it's it's going well for the future for the Talton Cup yeah and Kieran Martin obviously got the all important goal later on it was an unbelievable lung bursting run through the middle outside the boot finish but he also had a huge block then in the 72nd yeah. minute yeah. or something like putting his body in line and he's been around for a while like and do you know it's just a f- fitting way for the game to end with him getting the goal and then a big block and you know, it was brilliant no it was actually brilliant to see and like I suppose the turning point was the red card like just a bit over the top by Gallagher, big shoulder into the face of reckless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, he split him. It was it wasn't nice to see. Now, in fairness, he like he was so late. It was a funny. Was one. I was just, uh, yeah, it was. I don't think he went to do him or anything. No, it's just there. Bit, it was just the yeah. timing was oh, just terrible. Yeah, and he was brilliant. Like obviously he got man of the match, but Ron O'Toole is a serious, serious footballer. His ball for the goal was. Yeah. was tasty lovely ball across do you know what I mean his vision and his little jink and obviously he scored four or five points he's been brilliant all year he's yeah. been one of the standouts like and I actually tip Westmead I just thought up front they're very very you know you know McCartan they've got they've they've really really nice you know yeah. nice Dolan they're nice footballers and they can t- if they get space they can take shots and a lot of pressure on Cavan because everyone's been tipping them from the off and then yeah. like you need to win that game and we were saying last week that the losers of that game would be really disappointed pointed because you lose out on guaranteed All Ireland Championship next mm-hmm. year. You know, there's a holiday. There's more there's, pressure now in the league. There, you know, like there's materialistic things as well. Mm-hmm. But like to go through the year for Westmead, now they get to go off and bond on a holiday, have the crack come back and really have a cut it and say, look, we're worthy of being in the All Ireland next year. We're definitely there. So whatever happens in the league or the Championship, they can they've they've a they've a cushion now to go into next year. It's it's phenomenal. Yeah, like they were. Three points down coming into the last ten minutes. I've got one four out play. It's a, it's a good sign of a team to be able to do that against a team that were hotly tipped. But like you said, they're automatically into the other next year. They will play each other next year in Division Three. But mm-hmm. the pressure is on Kevin now 
going into January to be right for the league because look obviously look they prefer to be in the All-Ireland All series mm. so promotion is a huge thing for them now and it'll actually be another endorsement if Westmeath get a good run the All-Ireland series next year it'll actually be a great endorsement for the tel- another endorsement if it needs any more mm. another endorsement for the and teams will look up and say look at Westmeath they've you know if they get to quarter final or you know get to the the third qualifier game or whatever people say jeez they, they've went at yeah. it they've won it and you know that's the that's the building block but in terms of in terms of Cavan will be disappointed um, there's talk now management might move on don't know how how true that that, that is but again they have all the building blocks and we, we would have chatted with, with Keane before in terms of you know, why can't they why does it have to be sporadic performances yeah. what, how are they good enough to win Ulster you know, put it up to get against Donegal, and then, you know, they're playing Division Four and Division Three. You know, that that's something that they'll have to have a look at, and in terms of how how they play and what what is about. I don't think consi- consistency is an individual performance. And do you know what? A lot of it just comes down to how much pride you have in your own performance is going out in the field, and if it's come day go day, and if you'll take your good performance with your bad performance, do you know, that's normally what it comes down to. But mm-hmm. like in terms of the Telting Cup next year going forward, and teams that know they'll be competing in it seeing the benefits of winning Westmead going up the steps of the Hogan Sand, the celebrations in Mullingar, the extra few bob for a holiday hopefully at the end of the year they'll have a medal presentation like it must be exciting for other teams now to get into it and the format next year will be better so like all in all I'd say it's been a big success this year that can only keep growing Definitely. do you no, agree? It's been brilliant it's been brilliant you know you can tweak it obviously mm. maybe get more games for the water for it and it the Carlos it is to be tweaked next year uh, group stages group stages as as yeah which would be great but it's been absolute success the games have been brilliant you know um, and for Westmead to come along and, and an underdog they were underdogs at the weekend to win it and you know there was pressure as we say on Cavan but I think it's been a huge success mm. and it can only get better it's a realistic chance of silverware and as you said, you saw the scenes in Mullingar and everything, the crack, I'd say it was brilliant, you know, mm. summertime and, and, and they were enjoying themselves. And I know, you know, you should probably know this as well as anybody, but the, the, the holiday can't go how oversta- understated oh, how huge. important that is oh, for massive. terms of our team. In terms of, you know, that group is together. It's more time together in a different environment than a relaxed environment. Lads might have conversations that, you know, they would have never, you know, you're going to your ho- hotel room, you, mm. you have a chat with your roommate, but in terms of the whole group, like how many of them chats do you have and it's going to bring them tighter so it's, it's a big big thing and I know it's you know people might look at it as you say the materialistic thing but it, it is a big thing to get away in a team holiday oh it's huge and a lot of the, they might have they probably never done it together as a team mm-hmm. yeah and, like most of your memories are in them them nights out or them trips away and exactly. stuff like that so um, no it was brilliant and fair play to Westmead and it was actually great to see it celebrated the way it was um, in the ladies game um First, um, it'd be the first time since two thousand two there'd be no Cork or Dublin in the final. I know you were delighted the weekend. So ah, yeah, big, big, big result for the, for the girls. I know that they have. Uh, there's a good group there. There's mm. a good group of girls, and they've been, you know, soldiering for this last few years. So to see them get a big result out there is kind of. I, I know a few of them, um, and they're, you know, they put in an awful lot of time, and they're so committed to the cause and. So del- de- delighted for him, you know, yeah. Mark, Mark McHugh's in- involved in the, in, the, in the coaching side of things there. So delighted for him too. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a big thing uh, to beat me the next day. But, um, you know, they, they'll definitely fancy themselves. Yeah, and unfortunately, God, we're beating. But yeah. Kerry, Kerry Retch and uh, a few of the girls are above. They were sitting near me yesterday and they're playing Mayo next week. So, no, it should be good. Hopefully we'll get big numbers at the ladies' games now as well. And maybe two new finalists, maybe. Kerry Donegal maybe yeah, would be yeah, a good yeah. one that's kind of a result as well of the tiered system I think it's given yeah. every, like look at what Mead did and mm-hmm. now you've got Donegal and Kerry coming like you know Galway have been kind of there and thereabouts but like Mead put Mead to the very end yeah. Emma Duggan got a score at the end Manus Brannock's done a brilliant job in fairness with Galway so like there's there's six or seven teams that can win in All-Ireland over the next few years not just Cork and Dublin anymore or you know obviously Mead have come so like it's it's very competitive. It's great, and it gives all the girls in these counties a, a real carrot of actually winning the All Ireland. You know. Yeah, and before we wrap up, I want to give a mention actually to Louise Galvin, who was back on the Kerry panel yesterday, only a couple of months after having a baby uh, with Donica Walsh. Uh, she's probably one of Kerry's greatest ever athletes between Gaelic football, rugby, and basketball. And when I seen she was back on the squad yesterday, I was just she put us all to shame. But unfortunately, we've gone over time. Um, 
but uh, delighted to be joined today by Eamon and Finian. Um, I'll be keeping you in the middle next week when we'll be previewing the All Ireland final. Uh, so join us in, so it should be a few fireworks. Mm-hmm.